I'm just curious, how are those resolutions going? Great, great, great. Do you know by February, 40% fail, and only about 8% make it to the end of the year. In fact, I've heard even 2%. It's pretty dismal. Jerry Seinfeld said this, there's not a lot of greatness in the world today because there's not a lot of focus. I wish I had said that. <laughs> this is what I said. Most people get focused. Very few stay focused. And it's not what you think. People who stay focused have a different way of thinking. It's how they think. That's the secret. People who try to get focus and then fail, they tend to rely on techniques like avoiding caffeine or work offline. All of those things are good, but they all rely on the conscious mind. And what I learned as a magician is that the conscious mind is easily distracted. Let me show you what I mean. Put everything away. All your notes, all your papers, all your distractions. And show me your hands. That's all I need to see. Good. Excellent. All right. Some of you look like you've done this before. <laughs> all right. So what you want to do is hold your thumbs just like this. Now pay attention. You want to take your left arm and you want to bring it over the right just like this. So I'll do it again for those of you in the back. So you take your left and you bring it over just like this. And then what you do, if you can do it, if you have the flexibility. You want to bring your hands down like this and then hold it really tight. Make it, yeah. So if you're doing it right, I can't see everybody, but the pinkies are at the top and the thumbs are at the bottom. That's if you're doing it right. Now just look here and just follow me. How did I do it? Yeah. Miss direction. So here's the backstory. I wish you were with me. It was 1972. It was Christmas Day. I was 10 years old, my birthday. I was up in New Fairfield, Connecticut with my grandparents. Everybody's in the room. There's like, it's like 34 people in the room, all Italians for the most part. Now, you got to remember, this is before cell phones. This is before the internet. So my big Italian family is all talking at the same time. They're drinking wine. They're eating food. They're smoking in stores. I mean, it's a totally different world, 1972. All of a sudden, my uncle Victor Riley, the only Irishman in the room who didn't need to kiss the Blarney Stone, he picks up a coin. And he goes, here, Greg, look at this. He goes like this, and it's gone. Now I'm 10, and I'm like, what? I've never seen anything like that. I said, Uncle Vic, how, how, how did you do that? He says, I can't tell you, kid, it's a secret. I said, I know, but I can keep a secret. He says, I know, Greg, so can I. <laughs> so I begged him, this is a true story, this actually happened. I begged him, and that was the night that he introduced me to misdirection. Now what misdirection does is she distracts us from what's really important to us. And the way she does it with the conscious mind is with two tricks up her sleeve. The first one is multitasking. Now, I do it, you do it, you know people that multitask. First of all, it's not good for us. And second, it can be very dangerous. Every single year in America, 400,000 people get hurt behind the wheel because they're driving the car and they're looking at the cell phone at the wrong time. 400,000 people get hurt behind the wheel because they're multitasking. People pick up their phones, they tap it, they swipe it, they click it over 2,617 times a day. It's an addiction. And when people get to work, on average,
they waste 12 and a half hours every single week at work. They're not engaged. They're not focused on what's really important. They're doing something else, like looking at their cell phone. Do the math. 12 and a half hours per week, time four, time, that's a lot. Times 12, that's a lot of distraction and a lot of wasted money. In fact, people have figured this out. They estimate that in America, 650 billion, that's a B with billion, is wasted in America because people are distracted. They're not focused on what's truly important. And sadly, 4,000 people die every year because they picked up the phone at the wrong time while they're driving their car. Simply because they were misdirected, simply because they were multitasking. The first thing I want to share with you is that the conscious mind is easily distracted, and one of the ways that it happens is through multitasking trying to do too many things at the same time. The second trick that she has is information overload. There was a gentleman by the name of George Miller that wrote a paper many years ago called The Magical Number of Seven. And what he said was, there's billions and billions and billions of bits of information that are going on in the room right now. The clock is ticking. Your heart is ticking. You can hear the air conditioning or the heating system. There's so many things you can focus on, but we can't focus on everything. We just can't. He wrote this paper back in 1956. And what he said was, we can only focus on about seven bits of information, give or take a couple, but that's it. That's all we can. Now, if you've ever gone online and seen this video, it's called the Monkey Business Illusion. It proves the point. They have two teams. They have a basketball team over here, all wearing black jerseys, dressed in black, pretty much like me. They have another team over there, all dressed in white, like this lady in the back, she's got a white uh, sweater over there. They have two separate teams. All they say is, sit in the chair, watch the two teams. The team that's wearing the white jerseys are over there, they're gonna stay there. The team over here that's got the black jerseys, they're gonna pass the basketball. These guys are gonna pass the basketball. Don't even bother looking at them. All you have to do is focus on this team over here. And you need to count how many times that they're passing the basketball. It's called the monkey business. Spoiler alert, if you go home tonight, go on Google and type this in, you'll be able to see it. The number 16. So some people say, well, 15, 14, 12, but the number is 16 passes of the basketball. And then they ask the audience, did you see the gorilla? They have a guy, about 6'7", dressed in a gorilla suit, big guy. He walks out in the middle between the team over there and the team over here, beats his breast, goes like this, and only 50% of the people that saw it recognized the gorilla. The other ones didn't see it at all. Now, I don't have a gorilla. But it would be like this. If I told you to look around for seven things that are red, I have here focus with Greg Dwyer, that's one, or you could count the letters if you want. But if I said, okay, I want you to look around right now for seven things that are red. Well, there's the red exit sign, there's the flag, there's the extinguisher, I'm wearing a red shirt, you know. It'd be easy, right? Easy. Seven things, not a big deal. But if I said, okay, wait, Let's add, let's add seven things to that that are blue. And you say, okay, that's blue, the chairs are blue. There's, there has to be seven things that are blue in the room, right? It's easy, seven things that are red, seven things are blue. But then if I said to you, and there's gonna be a test afterwards, seven more things that were red, and then seven more things that were blue, you would be overwhelmed. They're, they're just no way. I mean, you can't, you can't take it in. You can't take in all of that information. So, back to the monkey business illusion. They said, okay, don't feel bad that you didn't see it. That's okay, don't worry about it. We want you to see the gorilla. We just want you to see it. So we're gonna show you the video again. 
This is the team over here. That's the one you should focus on. If you want to count the passes, fine. If you feel good about yourself, you know the number 16 anyway. But this time, I want you to look for the gorilla so you feel good about yourself. So they show the movie, people watch it, then after they go, did you see the gorilla? They're like, everybody, 100% of the people in the room saw the gorilla. And then they said, did you notice that the curtain changed colors? It was red and it changed to blue. No one saw it. No. So the conscious mind is easily distracted. That's the reason why people get misdirected. So I want to show you this. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to Vegas, but if you've ever been to Vegas and you've seen David Copperfield, this is how he, sh he starts his show this way. So would it be okay if I taught this to you, how I did it? The only thing is you have to promise that you don't tell anybody. Like you can show people, like you can show people, which is fine, but I, all I ask is you don't say how I did it. So if you agree with that, if you're okay with that, I'm going to show you how David Copperfield you know, starts his show. I would ask that you put everything away and then stand up. This way I know you're on board. Okay, good. So here's what I did. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. This is what I did. I asked you, just look up here because I don't want you to be misdirected. I want you to focus up here because if you're doing too many things, right? Right? All right. So look, all eyes up here. This is what I did. And don't tell anybody I taught you this. So you, I said, do this, and you did it, right? Because you've never done it before. This is the second time through. So it's like, okay, this is simple. All right. So I said, left over right. You're like, okay, which is my left? Okay, I got it. Easy peasy. And then I said this. And then I said, I can't see everybody. I can't see everybody. But if you're doing it right, your pinkies are at the top, right? And your thumbs are right here. That's what I did. Now I go. But because you're looking at your hands, you didn't realize that I missed you. So here's how you do it. Do it with me. This way you can show other people. But what you're going to do is you're going to simply you're going to simply say to somebody, these are the pinkies, these are the thumbs, and that's when you're going to let go. All right, everybody together. Simon says. Simon says. Simon says. All right, hold your hands out like this. Now your thumb should be facing up, right? And then your fingers should be pointing out, just like this. All right, so you're open. All right, go like this. Everybody turn around like this. Now here's where I let go. All right, clasp it really tight. So I say to everybody. Your pinkies are at the top, your thumbs are at the bottom. While you're looking at your thumbs, that's when I let go. But I don't have to because I already did it. How do I do it? Distraction. Have a seat. Have a seat. No. So, no. Well, look, look, if the look, conscious look, mind look, is easily on. distracted, which is something I think you look. saw, well, whole question to the end. If the conscious mind is easily okay. distracted, which it's obvious, then if you're like me, maybe the answer is the unconscious. Because I thought, that's what I thought. I've been studying this for 20 years. And I thought, well, if the conscious mind is easily distracted, then maybe the answer is the unconscious. But guess what? Misdirection has some tricks up her sleeve when it comes to the unconscious. It was 1973, a year later, December 26. I was just turned 11. I'm at my mom's house, my dad's house in New Fairfield. We're watching television, right? I'm in the living room. I can still see this. And all of a sudden, on the television, comes a commercial for The Exorcist. Now, my mom was a strict, born-again Catholic. Like, she had it covered. She sent money to uh, Billy Graham and the Pope. Like, she didn't take any chances. But she was very religious. She was very strict. So she's watching television with me, and The Exorcist trailer comes on, and I can hear her voice. I can't wait. That's what she said. She'd always say that when she didn't approve of something. And then she would roll her eyes. And I said, Mom, it's just a commercial. She said, Greg, no, it's not. I said, listen, it's not real. It's just a show. It's Hollywood. Don't take it so seriously. And that's when she said, Gregory, I knew I was in trouble. 
be careful what you expose your mind to. Now these commercials have not been on television for years. Tell me if you can complete the sentence. Don't squeeze the Yeah, that, that hasn't been on for years. Where's the beef? beef? Yeah. The other one is, you deserve a break today at? Yeah. These commercials haven't been on for years. We've been programmed. People who are in the advertisement field know this. This is the reason why they show commercials over and over and over again to get into our unconscious mind. Now, I don't know if you believe me or not, but look up here. I like you to think of a number between one and 10, like three, but not like three, because everyone thinks of that. Think of a number between one and 10, not three. If the number seven <laughs> popped into your brain, raise your right hand right now. All right, good. Keep your right hand up, good. Now, I'd like you to think of a color. If the first color that came to your mind is red, or blue, raise your hand now. All right. So here's what happens. We get programmed and conditioned over and over again. And here's the difference. Programming is what's done to us. Conditioning is what we do to ourselves. People who study this say we have about 45 to 65,000 thoughts every single day. And 90% of them are going to be the same tomorrow. Think about that for a minute. You woke up this morning, you said, I'm going to come here to see Greg Dwyer, focus with Greg Dwyer. You're not going to have that thought tomorrow, but you have about 45 to 65,000 thoughts every day, and 90% of what you're thinking today is going to be repeated again and again and again. About 50% of what you do is a habit. It's what you think, what you say, and what you do is repeated over and over. Have you seen that movie, Groundhog Day? Mm -hmm. Bill Murray? I love it. February 2nd, right? I love the movie. He wakes up at 6 o'clock, rise and shine campers, and don't forget your booties because it's cold outside. It's Groundhog Day. Now that's fun for the first day, right? <laughs> but then the second day, I don't know if you know this, I just heard the other day they want to make a sequel on it. They're going to bring another one in. I think it's going to be the same show, but they're just going to call it a sequel. Rise and shine campers and don't forget your booties because it's cold outside and he gets sick of it. Like, I, I don't know how long it goes on. Some people that really are into this, they say it goes on forever and ever and ever. But eventually, he wants to change. And what happens? He does change. He hits bottom, right? If you remember see the movie, he wants to take his life because he's sick of living these patterns over and over again. And in addition to that, he does have the desire to change. So if you ever watch the movie, spoiler alert, it's, it's a great romantic movie because he sees the patterns and then eventually he breaks the patterns. So here's the question I have for you. If you have 45 to 65,000 thoughts every single day, 90% of them are the same, and 50% of what you say and think and do is going to be repeated, what hope is there for you? 80% fail by February 1st. People who sit down on the 30th, 31st of December say, I want to get healthy, I want to change my life, I want to focus. 80% fail by February 1st. Only 8% make it, and some people say only 2%. So how are you going to stay focused? How are you, how are you, how are you, how are you going to beat the odds? Now, some people say there is no hope. They don't even set New Year's resolutions. Like, I'm done with it. I, I don't care. I'm just going to live my life. I'm not going to try to improve myself. And other people say, no, I'm going to try it again. But again, 80% of the people fail, or 80% of the people that set the New Year's resolutions fail. I wouldn't be here if I didn't think there was hope. I drove all the way from Connecticut. I live in Litchfield, Connecticut. I left around 1230, had some snow. As I'm driving down, I'm saying, I'm thinking in Danbury it's going to be rain. And then when I got into Long Island, I know Long Island because I used to live in Hicksville. So I said, I'm going to do it. We're not going to cancel. I wouldn't have made that sacrifice and dro drove here tonight or this afternoon if I didn't think there's hope. There's definitely hope. And I think the movie 
Groundhog Day has the hope. It has the answer if you listen and watch it. Two things happen. Number one, he hits bottom. Like, he's so bad, like, he's just so down and out that he's just, you know, look, the only way he can look is up. That's the only way, you know? And on top of that, he has the desire to change. And I really believe that's the secret. Number one, you have to hit bottom. And number two, you have to have the desire to change. Now, I don't know if you can relate to this, but what I'm about to tell you is absolutely true. In 1978, I was in high school and my mom died. I was 15 years old. It was devastating uh, for myself, my sister, my brothers, my dad. We didn't expect it. it you know, one day she started getting sick and within 10 months she was gone. So I only had my mom until I was about 15 years old. But you kind of bounce back. When you're young, you're flexible. So I finished high school. I went on to college, got some degrees, went on to graduate school, got a couple master's degrees and a couple letters behind my name. And then in 1992, when I was 30, I went out into the real world because I wanted to change the world. And I got my teeth knocked out. I really did. It was, it was not easy. And then two years later, my wife left. I was in Ohio at the time, and I remember I was outside. And I walked outside, and I saw a little patch of snow. And I couldn't understand. Like, I was so shocked. I was so stressed out that I, I literally got down and looked at the snow, and I saw the twigs, and I saw the leaves, and I was so stressed that I didn't know what season we were in. Like right now we're in January, right? I know it's around the 11th or 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, somewhere around. I was so stressed out. I didn't know what month it was. I didn't know what season we were in. Like, was were we in fall going into winter? Or are we in winter going into spring for about 30 seconds? That's how stressed out I was. I was a mess. I had totally, totally, totally hit bottom. But I knew I didn't want to stay there. I had the desire to change, just like the guy in the movie. So I started reading. I started going to seminars. I started devouring personal development information. You name it, I have done it. You have a seminar that you know. I either worked with them. I either taught with them. I took it, went to it consumed it for 20 years, I was involved in the personal development industry. The money that I spent, I could have bought a house in Florida. That's the truth. I've shared stage with people. I've worked backstage for people. I've written books. I have worked with these people. And here's what I learned in 20 years of studying the personal development industry. It's kind of shocking, but I want to share it with you. No matter what information you share with people, there's always going to be two groups of people. You can't beat the odds. There's going to be a large group of people that get distracted, which is the majority. And then there's going to be a small percentage of people that are laser focused, and they are the leaders. It's a bell, you know, I don't know if you know anything about a bell curve, like in school, you, you chart out a bell curve, you say, here are the high performers, here are the average people, here are the people that flunked out. You can't change that. And after 20 years of consuming books and audios and seminars and 20 years, I learned that you can't change the numbers. You cannot change it at all. The only thing you can change is to decide which group you want to be in. That's it. And when I was down and out, when I didn't know what month it was, I knew I wanted something more. And I knew, I knew I had to find a mentor. I needed to find somebody that was in this small minority that could mentor me and teach me. And so here's my journey. One day, I got a phone call to go out to London, England. And I said, yeah, let's do it. So I went out to London, England to give a workshop on sales training, team building, 
And the reason why I did it is so I could put it on my resume. I wanted to be an international speaker, so I did. And there was someone in the group that liked the message so much, they said, we want you to come to Vegas in the summer. I said, okay. A lot of times when people see me, they think, well, I'll refer him, or I know somebody he could speak to. So that's how my business grows. So I went out to Vegas, and I gave the same speech, I gave the same workshop, and after it was over, I found out that there was going to be a party that night with people like David Copperfield and business people in Vegas. The only problem was, my name was not on the list. But by that evening, my name was on that list. I wanted to meet somebody, not as a household name like David Copperfield, I wanted to meet a gentleman by the name of Kenton Nepper, who is a consultant for people like David Copperfield, and also a business person. The best way I can expo explain or, or describe him is he's like, he's like a wizard, like the Wizard of Oz. He, he's a little shorter than me, not much, but he's got this large beard, and he's very mystical, very successful, Wizard of Oz. And I took a picture with him, I introduced myself to him, and then eventually, eventually, I got up the courage to ask him if he would mentor me. And he agreed. And I paid him a lot of money. And I moved into his house. It's crazy, right? I moved into his house. Which is nuts. But it was only for two days one night. I moved into his house and we spent all of that time talking about how to be focused in business and in life. Now, I can't share everything with you. But after the lecture, I have a downloadable card. I'll share it with you. Uh, you can get his books there. You can get my books there. Uh, we'll talk about that a little later because there's no way in the world I can cover everything. But there's one thing I want to share with you. Before I moved into his house, I needed to test the waters. Like, what am I involved here? Like, is this a cult? Like, what's going on here? So I took him out to dinner, and I think it was the Cheesecake Factory in Arizona. And we sat there, and he did all of the talking for four hours. I was like this. Now, remember, the conscious mind is easily distracted. And when there's too much information, you're overwhelmed. Right? And I've had these conversations with him. He's never been straight with me. I think he did it on purpose. My mind, my conscious mind, was so overwhelmed with so much information, I was like a deer in a headlight. You know, I, I wanted to go back. I went back to my hotel and I rethought the whole thing. I thought about getting back on a plane and flying home. But something told me to stay with him. And I did. So the next day we worked 12 hours. The next day we worked 12 hours. And there was a point where he just stopped and he just gazed at me. He didn't say a word. He just looked at me. And when I came out of the trance, it was though he was giving me a message. I know that sounds crazy, but I want to share the message with you without telling you, because I want the message to go into your unconscious mind, like it went into my mind, without words. So what I'm about to share with you is directly from Kenton Nepper. It's his words, without any words.
sure there'll be questions. We'll do questions at the end. So this is what I learned from Kenton. Successful people are able to figure out, number one, what's important to them, and then they harmonize the conscious with the unconscious. This triangle up here is the conscious mind. I want to lose weight, I want to make more money, I want to be healthy, I want to be successful. This is the conscious mind. The unconscious says, who the hell do you think you are? You're a loser. You were abused when you were a kid. You had problems. So there is a major, 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 major disconnect between the unconscious, which is underwater. Most people don't go there. Successful people, they harmonize the conscious, what they say they want, with their unconscious. And the way they do it is through their imagination. Imagination. And what happens is they keep on doing it over and over again. And it puts them into a trance. Now, if you don't like the word trance or you don't like the word hypnosis, daydreaming. You know, people at work, they, they daydream they're going to go on the cruise in, in August or something. Successful people are daydreaming or putting themselves in a trance for what they want. They use it to their benefit, where the majority of people don't. So what they do is they figure out what's important, they harmonize it with the unconscious, and the way to get to the unconscious is through the imagination, through daydreaming or hypnosis. And that puts them in a trance. And then they take action, first in their imagination. Then they do it again in their imagination. Then they get the courage to do it in real life. And they keep on doing over and over and over until it becomes a masterpiece. That's what Kenton taught me. They create a dining mind. Let me show you. Do you see it? Do you see it? It's a lemon. It's a lemon. Okay, maybe not. Try again. Do you see it? It's a lemon. Okay. I smell a lemon. I can I can feel the lemon. How many do you see it? Anybody? All right. This is a knife. Cutting into the lemon. And the juices are coming down my arm. And in a moment, I'm going to put the lemon in my mouth. Anybody feel it? Yeah. All right. So we have one person out of 40. <laughs> There's not 45 people here. But. All right. Anybody else see it? Anybody feel it, have any kind of experience at all that there was a lemon in my hand? Just this one gentleman in the back? Oh, you felt it too? My, my, uh, ju my I don't know. Yeah, the glands, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you felt. All right. For the rest of the rest of us, let's do it this way. Does this help? <laughs> I brought this. Now this isn't real. This is a you know. Imagination is the key. Harmonize conscious mind using imagination. Put yourself in a trance. Take action in your imagination. Over time, it becomes a reality. All right. Let's try this. Are you with me? Yes. Okay. All right. Actually, let's do this. Everybody stand up, put everything away. Make believe you have a lemon. Make believe you have a lemon, not just me. You have a lemon. So hold out your knife. Hold out your knife. Hold out your lemon. Okay, just like this. All right, great. Now, do what I do. Take your lemon, put it up to your nose, and you can smell the lemon smell. Okay, good. Maybe you can touch it. This, this is easy for me to touch it because I can feel it, right? But maybe you, right? You feel it? All right. 
Now, we're going to do a little bit of surgery, and the juice is going to come down your arm, all right? Are you with me? I hope you are. All right, so you're going to cut into the lemon. Into the lemon. And then the juices are starting to come down your arm. And then you're going to take your lemon, you're going to take your lemon, see if we get a response here, put it into your mouth, and you bite down on it. Okay. Sit down if you felt nothing. If you felt nothing, nothing at all. Raise your hand real high if you felt it. Did you feel it? Okay. You felt it too? Do you have something you want to work on this year? Do you have something you want to work on this year? Okay, all right. Everybody have a seat and tell, tell us your name because you're going to come up and help. What's your, come on up. What, what's your name? Rose. Give her a hand. Stand right over here. All right, stand right here. So some people see it, some people don't. It's okay, you know, it's a bell curve. All right, so what did you see in this hand? Right. Yes. That time I just saw a fork. You saw a fork. Yes, you did. So this is a fork, not a knife. What did you see in this hand? A lemon. You did, didn't you? So I know you're under my spell. Oh, I, I saw that too. Here. <laughs> Open it up. What does it say? It says imagination. This is the key. Imagination. Now you look confused. Is there some, this is a good thing, because when I met Kenton the first day, I was completely confused. Is there something that you want to work on for 2024 that you want to be better at? Can you share it with people? Okay, your health. Me too. I, I want to walk more. I want to exercise more. Have you had this resolution in the past and you're just setting this again and again or what's happening? Yes, in the past, but this year is different. Okay. I've been able to take more action. Oh, nice. Okay. All right. On a scale to one to three, right? One being you really don't think it's going to happen. Two being, I don't know, maybe, or three being you're definitely going to do it. How confident do you feel about your health? Three. You do? Okay, good. Is there anything else that you want to work on besides your health? Don't tell me, but is there anything else? Yes or no? Uh, no, that's my main focus. Your main focus. So would you want to work with me with your health as far as getting focused and clear? Okay, excellent. So the first thing to do is to write it down. So here's what we do. Every single one of you should have gotten a card, right? And what you'll do is you'll write down the one thing that you want to improve. I'll give you a pen in a moment. And what you do, you can do it now, you can do it later, you can do it now. Write down health. It's important to write things down, I'll tell you why. They asked Warren Buffett, what's the key to your success? He gave him a piece of paper, guess what he wrote down? Focus, he wrote down focus. Bill Gates was at the same party, gave him a piece of paper, said, Bill, write down a word, guess what word he wrote down? Focus, so writing things down and hiding them away is really important. So that's your word for this year. Why don't you put 2024 on it? So you have your own cards. You can do it now or you can do it later. That's okay. It doesn't matter. But writing things down commits your life on paper because we have all of these thousands of thoughts, right? And getting something on paper and reflecting on it and being able to look at it is really, truly important. So the card's yours. Put that away. Now, is there a time during the day that you can say, I am going to focus on this as far as imagination and daydreaming. If you don't like trance and you don't like hypnosis, we all daydream. Can you think of a time during the day that you would say, you know what, at 5 o'clock in the morning or 6 o'clock at night or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I can definitely focus on this as far as imagination. What time would that be? Eight o'clock. Now, would this be eight o'clock in the morning? Eight o'clock in the morning. 
Okay. So imagine this. Look, look forward to that clock. Now, this clock says, this clock says 10 minutes to 8, which is exactly what that is. And that's the time you're going to do it. So 8 o'clock. And you're going to focus on that every single time 8 o'clock rolls around. You're going to focus on that. Okay? So let me give this to you. And this works if you put it in your dominant hand and you look forward and you think about your health and you think about 8 o'clock and you think about a circle. Now, as you think about a circle without doing anything, you'll imagine that it goes around and around and around. Okay, it, it already is, right? Yeah. So, by suggesting, watch, we'll do it this way, watch. By me suggesting to her that it's going to go back and forth like a, I don't know, grandfather clock? You ever see it? Like, here's a grandfather clock, right? If I just suggest to her while she's thinking about her health and she's thinking about 8 o'clock, that it's going to go back and forth and she's going to use her imagination, see? So she's very suggestible. Now, I'm not saying that I need to hypnotize her. I'm saying that all you need to do is use your imagination every time 8 o'clock rolls around. Think about your health. Think about one thing you can do, a small, tiny step, and then move forward for it. Right? Do you ever get to the point where you get stuck? Like, okay, how about we're going to show you a way so that you can get unstuck? All right. So first place we're going to have you is stand right here in the center, right there, and look forward. Now, I want you to imagine you're at the end of 2024. It's December, so you're using your imagination. You can close your eyes if you want. It's December of 30, uh, 2024, and it's the 31st of the year. And I want you in your mind to imagine how you feel, how your blood pressure is, how your health is. I want you to get the vision of that. You got it? Yes. Okay, so open your eyes. All right, so what if you were every, you said 8 o'clock in the morning, every 8 o'clock in the morning for five minutes a day, maybe you do it for 10 minutes a day, maybe you do it for more, but you imagine that what you thought about, and then you start taking action in your imagination. You don't have to go jogging, you don't have to go to run, you don't have to go to gym, you don't have to check the doctor, you don't have to do it, I'm not a doctor. You're just imagining all of this stuff in your imagination and then you're like, I'm imagining I'm doing this. I'm imagining I'm doing it. And then in reality, you start doing it. You're like, oh, that's weird. And then you imagine you're doing it. And then you imagine you do it. And then, oh, now you're doing this. You imagine it, and then it comes true. So on a scale of one to three, you feel very confident. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, so tell me how you know, tell me how you know you're going to definitely hit this goal of health. And how will you know if you have it? What will it be? Um, there will be flexibility in okay. numbers. Numbers are different. Okay, good. Okay. All right. So step into my office over here. Step right here. Now I want you to use your imagination. There's a circle on the floor. This circle represents complete failure. I have to take you here first. I have to take you to hit and body first. So I won't leave you here. I didn't drive all this way to leave you here. But this circle is is a circle of failure, of disappointment, of struggle, what color would that circle be? Imagination. Black. Black, okay. A lot of people pick black. All right. Now, can you think of a time when you were frustrated? Yes. You can see it. You can hear what you were saying to you? Okay, now, what I'd like you to do is step into that circle right now and say to yourself, I'm not going to do this. Say that in your mind. Okay, now step back out. Step back out. Now, honestly, do you feel different? Or do you feel the same? I think I feel the same. Okay, all right, that's fine. On a scale of one to three, are you still at a three? Or are you at 2.5 or a 2? Or you seemed a little shaken when you started thinking about those memories. Right. Okay, so what do we do? We say things to ourselves. 
We picture things in ourselves. We are our own hypnotist. We are our own magician. So, I can, I can do this. I can step into here and go way back to Ohio. I can do it. I don't want to live there, but it does impact me when I do it. So are you still at a three? No. Okay, that's fine. Thank you for being honest. What do you know? Just, we're making this up. We're just having fun. What would the number be? Good. Okay, 2.8. So all I'm using is my words and an image, and I have, I'm not saying I've sh shaken her to her core. I'm not saying that. I'm suggesting that I do this, you do this, we all do this. We have these thoughts, we create these images, we say these things to ourselves. Okay. So let me take you over here, but before I take you over here, I'd like you to spin around like this. Okay, good. All right, so now we have another circle here. Now, this is a happy circle. This is a circle that sees you at the end of 2024 as a success, right? What color would that circle be? I'm going to say yellow. I love yellow. Okay, so see the circle there. Imagine that the circle is moving, that it's bubbling up. And that once you step into it, not now, but you will in a moment, once you step into that circle, you're going to feel the yellow on your ankles, on your shoes, your sneakers come all the way up, all the way up your body to the top of your head, and it's going to shine out past your head. And you're going to feel great. So step into the circle and just feel it come up, the yellow coming all the way up. How do you feel about it? Different? Yeah, I feel something on the place of mine. You did. Yeah. yeah, imagination. So we're playing with imagination. What we're showing you and what she's showing you, and thank you for doing this, is that this is what we do to ourselves. She can step back out. Okay, so what are you now on a scale of one to three? Well, actually, let's do it this way. From one, one is the bottom, all the way up to ten, which is... You know, are you an eight now? Are you a seven? Are you a three or a five or whatever? Okay, so what we're doing is playing with her imagination. Now she feels more comfortable. Is there a circle on the floor? No. Oh, it's your imagination, right? How many of you do this? Like you saw the lemon, you didn't see the lemon? This is the imagination that impacts our health, our emotional life, our relationships, our state of being. Okay, are you ready to step into that one? No. Okay, she, does, she, she doesn't want to go there. Okay, we're going to make it fun. We're going to make it, come on over here. So you're an eight. All right, you're an eight. Are, are you dropping in numbers already just by, by thinking about this? Uh, Honestly. Honestly. Do you feel, how do you feel now? Confused. Yeah, that's good. That's good because that's when you get break feel. Through. But the thing is, we're just going from here to here, and she feels confused, right? So the color over here is black. That black represents frustration and failure in your life. Okay. You probably don't even want to step into it. Okay. I'll give you this. It's a padlock. And I'm also going to give you... I'm going to give you three keys. I have seven keys, but... The night is running long. I have three keys. I'd like you to try this key, this key, this key. Key in the lock. Now, I have to tell you, it's not going to open. So don't break it, but just realize you're going to fail. So step into the black circle, put the key in there, and say, I don't know if I'm going to lose weight. I don't know if I'm going to be healthy. I don't know if I'm going to have a good cholesterol. I don't know if I'm going to be able to be more flexible. I don't know if I'm going to be able to meet my goal. Put that key in, turn it, and see what happens. No. Try the next one. Try the next one. And how do you feel now on a scale of 1 to 10? 1 being lousy, 10 being, you said three. You, you're what? Three. Okay, good. Come on over here. I have to ask you a really important question. Do you smell popcorn? No. Do you smell lemon? All right, so I'm breaking the pattern. I want, I want her to think about something else now. So I have one key that opens the lock. I don't want to leave you there. I don't want to leave you in that state. I want to put you in a beautiful state of mind so that you're going to achieve this. 
That's what I'm here to help you with. So I would not lie to you. This is the only key that opens the lock. So stand back here, let's make it dramatic. We have a yellow circle here, right? Now see the, the shift of her mindset? See the shift of her imagination based on her focus? She's focusing here versus focusing there, and she's using her imagination. Watch what happens now. So you got the three keys in one hand, and I'm gonna give her the key that opens the lock. So open the lock with that key. Excellent. Take out the key, drop it in here, and then drop the rest of them in there. And then lock the lock. Okay. Here's what's gonna happen. Do you know which one opens it? No. No. And that's locked. It's locked. Okay. So in a moment, not yet, you're gonna step into the yellow circle, you're gonna pick a key, and hopefully it opens. How confident do you feel that that will happen? 50-50, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, no, there's four keys, right, yeah. there's four keys. So what if I told you that if the key doesn't open, you're probably gonna be at the same place you are right now a year from now? I wouldn't like you too much. Okay, you wouldn't like me. Okay, good, okay. All right, so let's let's do this. Let's do this. Would you would you shuffle these up? Just hold on to these for a second. Let, let's see if we can uh, we can change your, your mind just a little bit. I have what I call a focus deck. Focus deck. Now this is a normal deck of cards. Every single card, every single card is different. Yes? Mm -hmm. And every one has a motivational saying on them. Like this one says, uh, if you never try, you'll never live. This one over here says, think as if you have got what you desire, right? I created these a couple years ago. If you believe it, you can. You can make it, right? Let's do this. Just say stop anywhere you want. Stop. All right, excellent. Take a look at that card. Do not show me. Memorize the words. The words are important. Not the suit, not the card, the words. Say it to yourself over and over and over and over again. Now in a moment, you're going to step into that circle, you're going to select a key, and if the key opens, you're going to feel a certain way as you say that to yourself over and over and over again. Go ahead, step in the circle. And Select any key you want. You sure you want that one? Very nice question and answer. And then say what you were saying. I will and I can. Is that true? What does the card say? I can and I will. I can and I will. Now how do you feel now on a scale of one to ten? Ten. Okay. Give her a hand. What's that? It was awesome, she said. Say that to the camera. That was awesome. <laughs> so thank you so much. All right, so this is the time that I, I normally ask if there's any questions, if anybody has any questions about this. I'm here for a couple of minutes. What'd you have for dinner, Greg? Yes? You're imagining your future self, yes, if it's health. Like let's say you're single, like ladies I am. Let's say you're single, nobody left. You're single and you see yourself in a relationship. So what you would do is you would, you would visualize that at eight o'clock in the morning or seven o'clock at night or whenever you want. And you would see yourself taking action to meet somebody or if it's health. Listen, there's only about five or six things that people want. There's not a million. It's health. It's money, it's love, it's travel, it's peace. Of, there's only like five or ten things that we, basically what all people want is they want to survive and they want to thrive. And everybody has different rules 
on how they think they can, you know, if I can get this relationship, if I can be healthy, if I can make more money, then I'll be happy, you know. So what, what you would do is you would imagine um, what you want, and if you find that you're not doing it, it's because your unconscious is rejecting it. The reason why people go to therapy is because the conscious mind is not in alignment with the unconscious. That's the reason why people go to therapy. Because these things are out of whack. This person says, I want to find love. The inner child or the unconscious says, you, you've never had love. Your parents never loved you. Who do you think you are? So this is the reason why there's a disconnect. What imagination does is it draws the harmony if you do it over and over again in your imagination, in your imagination, which puts you into a trance. Drew Carey, this is the best example. Drew Carey from Ohio, he sat there and imagined that he was going to go on the Johnny Carson show. He did it every day, every day, until the day he walked out and he shook Johnny Carson's hand. David Letterman, I was a big fan of David Letterman. I wanted to meet David Letterman. I got to meet David Letterman. I got to be on the David Letterman show. I got paid for it. It first started in my imagination, hey, I'm gonna go meet David Letterman. And I was on a show, six million people saw me. People asked me, how did you do it? I said, this is how I did it. Yes, yes, go back to you. So you're, you're imagining this future success, right? Not necessarily the steps to take there, but you're just like visualizing yourself being that successful person or having that successful thing. What are you doing with the unconscious as it, the, like the, the negative thoughts as they creep up? Are you recognizing that? Yes, the, the, the one of the reasons why I came out with the deck of cards, which by the way are not for sale, um, but they are on the downloadable. If you want the downloadable, the, the audios are there. Is what you're doing is you're conditioning your mind for new information. Uh, be grateful for what you have, and life will give you more. So I memorized every single card in the deck. There's 52 of them. So what you're doing is you're conditioning, you're conditioning your unconscious. And if you find that it rejects it, it's because there's a belief there that is not congruent with what you say. I want to be in love. I want to be happy. I want to be healthy. If the unconscious has a disconnect with it, you're going to find out because the best way to find out is results. If you say, I want to be married by next year and you're still single eating uh, Doritos in bed, it's because your unconscious says, why didn't you go out and meet people? Why didn't you do things? If, if you want to be financially independent, and you say, how come I'm spending so much time on stupid stuff? It's, this is the reason why there's water here, because it's deep. You have to go deep down. This is not a microwave. This is a, this is a crock pot. Some people think I'm a crock pot. But, but this, this takes time. So what I've done is I've put together a course a 12-month course that you can have for free. There's nothing to buy, nothing to buy. That little card that I gave you, on the back it says focuswithgregdwyer.com and there's a QR code. Take it out right now. The first person that takes a picture of it and shows me their email, I'm going to give you a $97 gift right now. So here's the card. Yeah, just put your email on it, you can QR code it, and put your information in it. This card I sell at corporate events for $97. It's a card that has downloadables from Kenton Nepper plus myself. It's not for sale. The first person that can show me the website and put your email in, hit the button, gets this card. Take an action. That's what it's about. Did you do it? Anybody do it? You can go to focuswithgregdwyer.com or you can just scan the QR code. And by the way, you get one free because you helped me. So that's for you. Yeah, that's for you anyway. I have another one. I have another one. All right. Who, who put their hand up first? I may have, you know what? I, I may have another one. So see me afterwards. I'll give you the other one. So, did I answer the question? Kind of? I guess it's. Well, we are complex, but all I'm wanting to do is take 20 years of my research and boil it down to something that's easy and digestible. So I think that if you're sitting in bed eating burritos, like 
All right, the, the love example, right? Right. And so you're visualizing positive, you know, I'm lovable. And, and you're visualizing you taking the action that you need to take. Yeah. Like, for me, I want to walk. I used to walk four miles a day. So I would say, let's say I did this with her at 8 o'clock. I, I would visualize myself going for a, maybe not a four-mile walk, maybe a one-mile. I visualize it. I visualize putting my sneakers on. And then I take one small daily step towards that. Just a little baby step. And then another little baby step. Something easy. And I just keep on doing it over and over and over again until I create what I imagined. So when you find yourself in bed eating the burritos, what do you, are you, are you like analyzing why you're eating? Are you like realizing that you're thinking I'm unlovable? Is that what's happening and you're trying to correct those thoughts? Or? I, I think the, the best way to figure out what you're thinking is by the results that you're getting. The, the easiest way to figure out what you believe is to look at your results. So, because that's that's some pretty murky work. It is very murky. I I've spent I spent a lot of time. I have spent myself going deep. And like my mom died when I was fifteen, and there was a lot of trauma in my house. And I dated people that were kind of toxic and kind of a little off and crazy. And I realized that a lot of that had to do with my past, that I was just repeating the past over and over again. So yeah, this is, this is not easy. I mean, a therapist can help people or you can work on yourself. But the reason why people don't get what they want is because they say consciously, I want this, but unconsciously, who the hell do you think you are? And that could be the mom's voice, their dad's voice, five-year-old voice. Um, Money doesn't grow on trees, Gregory. You're never going to be rich. You're never going to have success. All of that stuff had to go away. And you do it by connecting this through imagination and then putting yourself. I really think the reason why Drew Carey got on the Johnny Carson show is because he self hypnotized himself. Like, you said, did you say Rose was? Yeah. Yeah. Ro, Ro, Ro was hypnotizing herself. She was hypnotizing her. She was going over here and feeling lousy. Right? And then she was coming over here and feeling better. I do it all the time. It's, I hope that helps. Somebody else had their hand. You, had, yes, yes. Any words on time? Time? Like, it's 10 after 8 right now. What time do you want to go? <laughs> no, you mean how long does this take? No, not that. Uh, that once you reach... Uh, some of those levels, you can really control the outcomes, but then you ran out of time. Oh, you mean life? Is not, that what you mean? Not, not life. It's more every day. Your ordinary routines, you don't have enough hours in the day. Even though you're focused, you say, you know, 30 minutes for another language, say 30 minutes for a new recipe, 30 minutes for a musical instrument, 30 minutes for science, 30 minutes for philosophy. Yes, I, I, think, I, I think I got what you're saying. I think the reason why life is so wonderful is because it's limited. I think, you know, I think I saw this movie, Tup, Everlasting. You know, this guy lives forever, and then he finds out that he doesn't want to live forever. The fact that we have limitations on our life forces us to say, what is really important? So, yeah, there are a lot of things that we can do in our life. But if we really want, Jerry Seinfeld said, the reason why there's not a lot of greatness in the world today is because there's not a lot of focus. It's about focusing on one thing. One thing as a man, my health. One thing as my career. One thing as my uh, finances. One thing as a, a, a family man. So it can't be a hundred things. No, it, it has to be, it has to be focus and it can't be everything. You know, like somebody said to me the other day, they're building a website with me and they said, I, I understand you're gonna help me with everything as far as marketing and I'm like, how am I going to help you with everything? I can help you with some things, like a landing page and your website, and certain things, but trying to focus on everything is too much. Is that what you mean? More or less. Yeah, you, you, have to, you have to realize that I'm 61, you know, maybe I'll live another 10 years, another 20 years, but you get to the point where you say, this is what's important to me. So, um, and that's not, and this isn't, but this is. But 
Yeah, we, we have a limited amount of time, which I'm over time, so I apologize. Yes, sir. The, the diamond in the uh, pyramid, uh, yes. what's that represent? Um, it really doesn't represent anything other than creative imagination. There, there really, you know, there really isn't anything to it. The name of my company is Diamond Mine Potential, so we decided to put a diamond in there. But, okay. um, but if you were connecting the dots, you would have a diamond. Um, but yeah, it doesn't doesn't mean anything per se. But yeah. If you can think of something creative, let me know. Yes, ma'am. I was curious. I I saw the lemon and I saw the knife, but when you asked the question, I didn't understand you at all. Oh, that's okay. But you have a lot of imagination. You see the coin, right? I do. Okay, see good. That. All right, just there's no point. There. There's no point. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I did. <laughs> just having fun with you. So I hope you've enjoyed the presentation. And we have any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, you know, one of the books that has influenced me was The Silver Silver Mine, okay? Yeah, so if you've ever read Silver Mine, I've never been through the course, I've never read the whole M -I -N -E book. M-I-N-E or Mind? Uh, I think it's M-I-D, I think M-I-N-D, I think okay. it's Silva, Silver, Silva, Silva, right? Oh, Silva. Silva. And it's jo exactly. Joseph Silva, but here's the story, and this is really powerful, this is what blew me away. He was talking about self-hypnosis, right? And if you read the book, you only have to get in like 20 pages where he had his daughter sitting here. She was like 12 or 13 years old, right? And he was asking her questions. And while he was asking her questions, she was going into La La Land. And guess what happened? She was able to pick up on what he was going to ask next. It's, and I'll tell you, the best time to do this is the morning and the time that you go back to sleep. It's the best time because you're in an alpha state. But I'm not here to preach to you spiritually or metaphysically, but there's something to this where when you start saying, I want this, and I'm going to use my imagination, and then you start putting yourself in a trance, and then you start meeting people, and then doors start opening, and you're like, this is, this is really strange. Because here's the truth. We can't focus on everything. So when you get laser focused and you say, this is what I want, you tend to start seeing the opportunities that you would have never seen if you were on Facebook for four hours. <laughs> this is magic. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for my Uncle Fick. This guy, he, he, was, he was wonderful. He was an entertainer. He said, Greg, come over here. I said, well, what? He says, i got to show you something. I would not be standing here right now if it wasn't for that situation. He said, Greg, i got to show you something. I said, what? Man? He says, look into my hand. I said, what? And that's when he made it disappear. But that was just a trick. Wow. Now you know the magic of focus. Good night, everybody. Yeah. I'll be over here if you guys have any questions.